Hi everyone, I'm Gina Kay from Gina Kay Designs and your host of Stamp TV. And today on Stamp TV, I'm going to show you a cute little card project featuring the brand new Frisky Feline stamp set. This stamp set was drawn by my daughter Alicia and these cats remind me a lot of her cat, Honey. And Honey is a beautiful black cat and someday I'm going to have Alicia come on Stamp TV and show you how she colors a black cat because it's pretty amazing. Well, I'm not that good at that, so I decided to make my cats other colors. And I'm going to show you how I add a little bit of texture to the cat to make it look a little bit more like fur. And then I'm going to show you a couple of other little tips and tricks to complete this card project. Let me show you the tips, the tools, and products that you need to make this card. You're going to need the Frisky's Feline, Frisky Feline Stamp Set. You're also going to need either an acrylic block, or in my case, I'm going to use my Mini Misty. I'm going to use some of the Gina K Designs Craft Ink, some Memento Tuxedo Black, and then I have a few Copic markers here. I have Black 100, I have C3, which is Cool Gray number 3, I have C5, cool gray number 5, C7, cool gray number 7. I have N5, I'm not sure which ones of these I'm going to use yet. This is neutral gray number 5. And then I've got this real pale pink. This is R00 and it's called pinkish white. And then I also have a Copic colorless blender pen. I have some of the colorless blender refill here and you can buy this in this size or there's also a big bottle available. It's a great tool to have in your stamping arsenal for doing different kinds of techniques using Copic markers and it's also great to refill your Zero Blender. Then I have two little pieces of towels here. I just cut a washcloth and then this was a a bigger beach towel and you can see these are very loopy towels and that's what you want. You want some sort of little towel that has lots of loops. I also have some of the new purple tape by Thermoweb. This is amazing if you haven't tried this yet. This tape is it's similar to painter's tape but it's not as sticky as painter's tape so you never have to worry about your images getting destroyed if you use it to tack down your dies or using it for stencils or any other thing. Then I have an acrylic block. For cardstock colors for this card, I have Gina K Designs Craft, some charcoal brown, and then I have a heavy base weight white folded card. I also have a couple little pieces of white layering weight. Now I'm going to use a couple circles dies here. These are by Cherry Lynn. They're the silver small stackers and the purple small stackers, but you can use any circle dies or circle punches that you have. I'm also going to use the Frisky Felines die set for this card. And then I'm going to use my score buddy for the background. Now today on my blog, we are having a blog hop. All of our design team members are showcasing cards we made using the Playful Pups stamp set and also the Frisky Felines. So I did this card a couple of weeks ago on Stamp TV. And you might remember that this is a little replica of my dog Teddy. So today I thought I would definitely use the cat stamps and I'm going to grab those right now. All right, so I'm gonna start with my mini Misty and a piece of white cardstock. I'm gonna stick that into the mini Misty and pick a kitten. So I think in this case, I will color this one. This is a fun one. You can see mine is so stained because I've been trying out all kinds of new inks, including Stazon and India ink, and they're very stainy, some of those inks. But once you clean them, um, even though the black is still there, it doesn't affect the way the stamp performs. Now I'm going to use some of this tuxedo black ink because I'm going to be using some Copic markers, and this is a great ink for that. And then there's my image, nice and crisp. All right, I'm gonna put that aside. And then I'm going to start to color. Now I have these markers here and I'm gonna make this kitty gray. So I'm gonna start with a lighter gray first. I'm going to use C3. And these are chow markers. Now the chow markers are just like the sketch markers in every way except the size of the barrel and the amount of ink that's in the marker. Otherwise, you can do everything the same way with the chows. You can refill them, you can put new nibs on them, um, 
They have the same exact kind of nibs on the ends. They're just a skinnier marker, which some of you might like. And I think the other thing that might be different is um, the name of the marker isn't on the cap. So some people actually punch out a tiny little circle and put the name on there. But these work really well. These were my first Copic markers because they're less expensive than the Sketch. They don't have all the colors, but they have a lot of colors. And of course, when you can start to collect the Sketch markers, they do mix and match perfectly with the Sketch markers. So I'm just coloring this a solid gray. so relaxing. Coloring is just all the rage right now. And not that long ago, we had a really good friend of mine, Kathy Rakusen. She came to our retail store, Village Paper and Ink, and she taught a bunch of techniques. And one of the techniques that she taught, I'm going to show you. It's something that I had done in a video a long time ago, but I kind of forgot about it. When she brought it up, wow, I just, it, it's so cool. So I'm just going to put a little bit of shading in there, a little bit of shading underneath the kitty's neck. Just kind of back in these little areas that where things connect. And then I'm going to grab that C3 marker and just pull some of that color back out again. Just so that looks a little bit shaded in there. But I don't want a definite line. Okay, the same with up here. Okay, so there's a little bit of shading. Now again, I'm, I, I say this all the time and it's so true. I'm not a Copic marker expert, but you know, I think that as long as you're having fun, that's really what matters. And I have so much fun coloring that I don't really mind that mine doesn't look perfect. And I have a wonderful teacher that works here at my store. Her name is Kathy Sanders. And one of the things she had said to me one time when I was asking her how to shade and how to see light, and she said to me, do you really wanna see light or are you just looking to have some lights and darks in your coloring? And I realized that I really wasn't that interested in seeing where the light was coming from. I just wanted shading. I wanted some light parts and I wanted some dark parts. And so that's kind of the method that I've been using. All right, so I'm just pulling that color in a little bit. And I'm gonna wait on the eyes until after I've finished blending all this fur. So you can see what that's starting to look like there. All right, so now I'm gonna take a little bit of a darker marker, this C7, and I'm gonna put, I wanna test it over here first. Ooh, that's pretty dark. So we'll see how I do here. I'm just gonna add a couple little lines in here. And I'll soften them with my marker, my other marker, the lighter color. Let's get that C5. No, I'm going to go back to the C3. I'm just going to blend that out a little bit so it's not so obvious. And that just gives it a little texture. All right. And then I'm going to do Kathy Rakusen's trick. Okay, I am going to take this little piece of washcloth and then I'm going to grab some of this colorless blender pen and I'm going to make those little loops kind of stick up. You see how they're sticking up? And I'm going to add a little bit of this blender onto that washcloth and then I'm going to dab this all over the cat. And you'll start to see some texture coming out in the fur. Get the tail in there. 
Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. And can you see now all that little, they're kind of like little bumps in there. Isn't that just the coolest thing? So that adds texture in the cat. Okay. So now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some of this pink. This is the R00. I'm going to add some of that into the ears. Just kind of rubbing that color in. And then we have a little bit of pink ears. And I might do a little pink on the cheeks, just because that would be cute. Then I'm going to take the 100 marker and fill in the nose. Then I want a green. So I'm going to use a real bright green. Let's see what this looks like here. Okay, I'm going to add that to the cat's eyes because some cats have absolutely the most beautiful color eyes. They're so vibrant. And then I'm going to soften it a bit. That marker was YG06, yellowish green. I'm going to soften it a little bit with this grayish yellow, just a bit. All right, so there's my little finished cat. Let's see if we can add a little more texture, do another round of this just in his little body or her little body. Oh, that's fun. They look so furry like that. Okay, so now to cut this out, what I'm going to do is I want to bring my Big Shot in and I want to use a piece of cardstock, a different color. I'm going to use this Sandy Beach because this is very thin and I'm going to cut out a little template like I did with the dog. Because it really bothers me when my um, my little die cuts, the edges aren't perfectly even. So I'm making a little template here. And I'm going to just cut that out. Doesn't have to be big. I'm going to cut that out and then I'm going to lay my cat down and I'm going to center this over the cat so it looks very even. All the white space around the cat looks even. That looks pretty good to me. Then I'm going to use some of this fun purple tape and tape that down. Let me see. Let me move that a bit. Pretty good. Tape my little template down. I'm also going to tape it right to my plate here so it doesn't move around. Then I'm going to find the hole and when you put your die over it you'll feel it drop in and then it won't move at all. So I'm, once I have that in place I'm going to take a little more of this purple tape and just hold it in place. Now what's funny, what I've noticed is it doesn't always look like it's real even when it's dropped down into the hole and yet it cuts really nicely. And that might be why sometimes it's hard to cut things out perfectly is because maybe the blades are a little bit different than what we actually see. See that? That is cut out perfectly. Okay. So that's my little template trick. I showed that once before when I made the little puppy card. But for those of you who didn't see that card or maybe don't remember, that was a little trick I used. 
Now I'm going to add a little wood graining to this. So I have a piece of craft cardstock here. I'm just going to score that at every quarter of an inch going down. And then once I get too close to my fingers, I'm going to just flip it over and keep going. It's kind of hard to get into that side. Then I'm going to use some of the craft ink and I'm going to just add a little bit of texture to that. It looks good. Let me grab my little tidy towel and wipe things up here. This is a new little towel that's coming out in our February release for cleaning your stamps and your workspace too. So I'll clean my stamp with this as well. Although that permanent ink is not going to come off. Okay, so my next step is going to be to take this piece of wood grained paper and adhere that onto my charcoal brown cardstock. And then this whole panel is going to go on my white card base. All right. Now we need a little greeting. So let's pick a greeting here. I think I'll do You're the Perfect Friend. I have some friends that I want to send cards to, and this will be a perfect one. So just to keep the black consistent, I'll use the Memento Tuxedo Black again, and I will stamp that right there. Okay. Then, I'm going to use the little paw print out of here. And I'm going to use some of the craft ink again. And I'll add a paw print right down here, like that. Okay, so now this is going to get cut out with this circle die. So once again, I will need my Big Shot, and I'm going to line that up and cut that out. There we go. I'm also going to need a little piece of charcoal brown. To do a shadow layer. So I'm going to cut that out of a scrap I have. And then these two will layer together perfectly. All right. So now it's time to assemble this card. And this is a really simple little design. I'm going to just layer these two pieces together. That is not straight. There we go. And then let me find my little cat. I'm going to just have a little layout like that. I'm going to put these on with some of these foam squares. I'll use four of those. And, all right, make sure these are in a good spot, so I'll put that here. You're the perfect friend, like that. Then I'm going to add a couple little squares, mostly down the one side, 
because this is going to kind of overlap like that, so I don't want a foam square right there. So I'm keeping them off to the one side. And then that little kitty will go right there. And there is my finished card. So I made another card and I colored three of the cats from my other card. And here is my other card. For this one I used, you're always there when I need you. And I colored three cats using that same little technique where you just flick some color in and then go over it using that little piece of washcloth with the Copic Colorless Blender. So there are two finished cards using the new Frisky Felines stamp set. I hope you've enjoyed today's Stamp TV video. Stay tuned to Stamp TV for more card projects. And thanks so much for watching.